Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday. We made it to yet another week. And I am coming to you live from Orlando. Not really, actually. This is one of my favorite places when I lived in Orlando, Lake Eola. It's in downtown Orlando. It's very cool, very peaceful. Those who've been down there who were pretty much locals like I was know that downtown Orlando is so much better than Disney and all the attractions. Anyway, I just wanted to play with some of the camera work, the backdrop, green screen, all that stuff. I thought that would be really cool. So today we are going over part four of painting Jean Tierney in India ink and airbrush using our ink dilution set, which is very, very exciting. And so I'm really happy that everyone is here today. I'm just going to go to my other screen. So what I'm going to do is very quickly go ahead and authorize so I can see the chat, so I can see who's here. Hopefully we're not hearing crickets, but I have a feeling I'm going to have a nice, a nice group today, as always. Almost there. You guys know the drill. You ink flingers, you guys know. Okay, and bam, let's see who's here. So, we have Ray. Good evening. How you doing, sir? And we got Tone, and that's great. And Willie and Mike. So, so far, so good. So, we have four people. That's a healthy start. What I'm going to do is just uh, grab my controller here so I can see this on the big screen. So, just give me one moment to find that, if I can. Doesn't look too good at this point. But I'll find it, the remote. I don't know where it is. Here it is. Okay. Okay, so how's everyone doing today? Any new projects I want to hear? Uh, anyone working with the uh, ink mixtures? And I would love to, love to hear that. That would be very exciting to uh, definitely hear if anyone is using the dilution set. Uh, we're going to be using that, of course, today in the live stream, which is good. And we're going to go to my videos, and there we are, part four. So I can see myself on the big screen as well. Hey, what's up, Raul? How's it going? Good to see you. Raul, uh, Mike got his set. Uh, Willie, did you get yours today? Hopefully. Good to see you, sir. So we have Raul, I sent one out to you, and Willie, and uh, so let me know if you guys got your set today. Uh, should be, I think if someone, I think one of you guys was in Florida, and that should arrive tomorrow. I think what the tracking says. Okay, so what we're going to do, which is really cool. So Jay, good to see you, what we're gonna do is we're going to come in with the dark mixture. So, just got to find my dark mixture here. Okay, so very quickly, I just take the dark mixture. And I'm going to load up the airbrush. There we go. Always do that away from the artwork, of course. And there we go, got a nice flow here. Make sure with a couple of daggers, a few dots, a fade in line. We are good to go. Okay, so, okay. Oh, Willie got his. That's cool. So, Raul, I think yours is tomorrow, if I've seen the tracking correctly. So, definitely. So, Willie, everything arrived in good shape, I hope. I put a lot of bubble wrap on that and everything. Hey, Tone, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, my friend. 
That is so great. Thank you. So let's go ahead and we got the we have the dark mixture right now. So what we're going to do is start really pulling out some of those uh, darkest darks. Like so. Oh, great. So Willie says he was sitting at his front door when he got home from work and they were in great shape. You guys were the first, so you would have made in shipments. And I was like hoping it wouldn't be a, a, a inky mess. <laughs> you know? So I, I really, really went uh, thorough with the uh, bubble wrap. So I'm using my freehand shield here. And you can go ahead and lower this uh, air pressure, which is good. And you tweak it to, you know, what you like. But I like it, I'm at 25 PSI, guys. And then I'll lower it just a bit until I really feel I have the control I'm looking for. Oh wow, so anyone else having problems with the feed as Mike has said? So Mike, good to see you. How are you my friend? So I know Mike's arrived in good shape, thank God. That makes me happy. Oh, nothing too important there, Mike. Uh, just start, uh, you know, talking about about making sure that the uh, mixtures have arrived in one piece without being an uh, ink bomb, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be bad. So we're going to take our mono knock eraser. If you guys haven't tried this, it's really fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad, Mike. That is so cool. I love this knock eraser. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and try to establish some of the lights and you see even at this late stage uh, we do have a really erasable surface I mean not not like crazy erasable but erasable nonetheless hey Rick thank you so much how's it going my friend thank you for coming by so as you can see we're just uh, you know establishing some of that light and then we're going to go in there a little bit deeper ah thanks Mike thanks I really really appreciate it yeah I used to work for Amazon so I know you know when things like any kind of liquids it really has to be packed well almost to exhaustion to the point where you know People might feel I overdid it, but as long as it gets there in one piece, I don't think you can possibly overdo it. Bubble wrap is our friend. <laughs> so guys, I'm going to do a Tech Tuesday on, on the wire. Uh, Dion showed me from the Netherlands. He was kind enough to show me his technique, and I really loved it. So he taught me how to make this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and share that with you next Tuesday. And Mike says, so you think that eraser, that eraser a lot better than the other mono eraser? It's a great eraser. I think it's just for different jobs. The uh, knock eraser is good for larger areas, you know, blocking out areas of, uh, of erasing, but nothing like... Uh, like it's not good for fine detail but for larger areas I don't think it digs into the surface too well so definitely part of your a good part of your eraser arsenal Ray found this really great eraser and that eraser Ray is by is also by Mono right 
And what was the uh, designation on that eraser, if you don't mind? Yeah, Ray came up with a really good one. So as you can see, I can move around the wire to get different negative spaces. And I find it works particularly well when you're going in with the black. And, oh yeah, the W700 Tombow. Thank you, sir. Can you zoom in on that hair? Of course, Rick. My pleasure. Let's see. Oh, looks like hit the wrong button. Let's see. Okay. Let's zoom in on that. Okay, there we go, sir. So as you can see, we can take our wire and we can get some really nice negative spaces in here just move that around and this works like I said especially well during the dark mixture stage and you can get some really nice and you can also turn it which is the main advantage of this is the ability to have it turn with the with the direction of the hair so that's really good and you get some really nice uh, organic shapes which would really be impossible if you just went ahead and did it manually And then we can go ahead and reiterate some of that with the with the mono eraser. And let's see over here. So we want to make sure that we are watching out for any any kind of patterns that you know we will naturally put in. I have to be careful of that, definitely. Let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit. Okay. And this would be a good time to go ahead and just test it out. Let's see how we react to some of the white here. Not too bad. As long as you're paying attention to what's happening on the surface, you can go ahead you can always dust that down but you want to treat the white as sort of a specular light of what would happen let's say if uh, the sunlight is uh, dappling on a on a lake you know that has little waves and you're just going to get something like that right and Rick says uh, he can see the technique now so cool very good thanks sir glad to help and you want to look at the edges here. What are the edges doing? There we go. So you see when we zoom out, we have something that looks like something, right? I mean, when we zoom in, we don't really see it, but we have to uh, really trust in the process, guys. Same thing here. We're going to use our wire and we're going to bend it and then we can move this around here. And then we could go for some really nice negative shapes there and just continue until you get something that you feel comfortable with. You don't want to reproduce what exactly is there. I think that's counterproductive, but you definitely want to, and you want to put tape on both sides, so this way you're not stabbing yourself, and also it snags onto your glove if you don't have, if this, if the ends are not uh, tied up like that. So, let's go and I'll show you some of the turns here. Get some of that negative space. Go over it a few times so you get it nice and dark. 
and then we'll zoom in and then we can take our mono eraser and sort of set up for some white that we're going to put in just like so and I'm going to take our our fabric uh, pen by Pons and Fonz and Porter, which is really good. You want to be using this when you're a little sure. Reason being is it doesn't erase or blend as easily as a white pastel. So this is a little bit more. And you remember, you want to dapple the light, you know? Because that's what happens in hair. Only certain hairs are picking up the light, not all the hairs. The lights that are facing most towards the light directly are the ones that are getting this dapple effect. And then you can go ahead and set up, set up that light again. Same thing here. We want to make sure we're doing that dappling though, right? We, it's what you leave out which is more important sometimes than what you put in. And we can just zoom out so you can see what I mean here. And you see we're getting some nice hair effects. It doesn't have to be crazy. You just want to indicate. And indicating is, is a pretty, pretty good skill to have. Because you have to know what to put in and what to leave out. And that is not an easy task and then while we're here we can go ahead and work on the edge of this ear here so we're getting this is part four this is where we're doing a lot of the finishing up uh, there'll probably be a part five but you never know but this is where we're going to be doing the finish up so right here you want to really Tighten that edge of this ear here. And we'll just pop that out. And just really pay attention. Remember that, you know, one second rule. Look one second, paint one second. Yes, Willie, you definitely can. Uh, just type in Pons and Fonz and Porter and you'll see it. Uh, I think it's like $8 and you do get quite a bit of refills. Maybe we can take our, you know, our mono eraser, see if we could get some of those lights in the dark here there we go now since we went ahead and did the light maybe we can go ahead and put in the, sh the dark right next to it to create really nice nice interest here and take your time until you find the uh, edge that you're looking for there's no rush no points for time so there we go. See, we have a nice sharp edge. Really feel like that ear is, uh, you know, going back into space, especially, you know, on the inside of the ear. So we're going to have a nice hard edge. So let's pay attention to where that hard edge starts. So the hard edge starts here, then it softens up as we go up here. Same thing here. In here, it's super soft. So there is a variation of value, but very close. And then it's much darker, so we can darken up with that dark mixture. Really go in there and create some volume. Now, there is a hard edge, even though the values are close to one another. 
there is a hard edge here. There we go. And let's soften up that edge. There we go. So we have a really nice ear. Then if we go back, you can see that ear looks really good. Uh, you know, it's a minor player in the painting, the ear. But I think that it's important to do anything correctly. Whether you emphasize it or de-emphasize it, it's totally up to you. But you definitely want it to look good. And the edges is really what's going to do it, is the, are the edges. Now I can do see that we went ahead and lightened that. And now we can see that this part is darker. So you can see I'm, I'm a good distance away from the painting. Over here we have some, some activity as far as her hair is concerned. So that whole rule of looking for a second, painting for a second, is really going to give you the answer as to where things are. And having that dark mixture, you can really get some of those rich darks over there. So any of you guys been to Orlando lately? I lived there in the 90s and I really liked it. I thought it was fun. Not for the Disney part, but just for, you know, living in Florida. It was very clean down there. And Mike says, I can't figure out how the ear looks so good close up and, and far away. Normally it looks good from one view or the other. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. We just have to pay attention to the edges, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get there. Uh, Rick says, what an impact that has on the look of the piece. So good. Thank you so much. Yes, something so simple like the ear, if done with, you know, attention, you know, paying attention with the one second rule, then we are really going to have a good supporting actor or actress to the star of the painting, which is the face. So with that dark mixture, we're going to cool down on the hair a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to work on some of these darks, reinforcing them. This eyebrow really isn't that dark, so I really can't go too much with that dark mixture there. I could get carried away, but I'm really stopping myself. Always paying attention to that one second rule, guys. And the dark on these lips is, are so important. But more importantly, is like, where is it dark? Where is it lighter? Uh, what are the uh, edges doing? Uh, says a lot about the likeness.
and definitely adjust as you go. So right now we're going to come back in with the light mixture and the medium mixture, but right now we're just doing the dark mixture. This way we stay focused on this part of the painting, you know, not going too far off. Um, but just like every other stage of the painting, in this dark mixture stage, you definitely want to keep moving around. You don't want to stay too long in one area. That can only hurt the painting as a whole. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to try and, and turn this here. This, you know, it doesn't always work perfectly, but we can separate them a little bit to create some interest. We're still getting that parallel look. So let's say like right here, we'll go ahead and give it a shot. There we go, we're creating some interest here. doesn't work as well as the Blackbeard wheat, I would say. It works good, but it sort of, uh, it doesn't do the complete job that I feel the Blackbeard wheat does with the hair. Do I recommend a wire? Yeah. Do I need a little bit more, uh, you know, fine tuning, learning how to do it uh, even, even better? Of course, I can always get better. It's a new tool for me. So I'll definitely be using it for the next couple of paintings and documenting it and seeing the pros and the cons from my perspective so I can share that with you guys. As you can see, we'll keep moving down. We have these specular highlights here. So let's see how this serves us here. Okay, that worked out a little bit better. I think I have to just stay in that area a little longer for it to really start to show up. So what happens if we just spray for a little while longer? Then it shows up a little bit better. Let's do that over here. There we go, and I think it, I think that's the trick. Might be to stick with it for a little while longer than I would with the Blackbeard weed. So now I went ahead and established some really nice variations and organic shapes. Now we can take our mono eraser and we can start setting up where we're going to put those specular highlights of the hair. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our fabric pencil again, and let's go ahead and remember we don't want to, whatever we do, we don't want to start filling this in. We just want to create some, some specular highlights. Think of Johannes Vermeer and the way he does his specular highlights. And I was always taught, you know, when I was in school that less is more. Now 
And the good thing is, if you feel that it's a little too powerful, you can always take your, you can always dust that down. If you feel it's a little strong, you just dust that right down. Or you can come in and you can go in between and create some dark accents here and there. You can do that too. And so right over here, you can go ahead and try and look at the abstract shapes, guys. Don't, don't forget its hair for a little bit. I mean, you don't want to totally forget its hair, but forget its hair for a little bit. And this way you can just look at it as, as large shapes. If you look for a second, paint for a second, in that ratio, you're going to look three seconds, you can paint for three seconds. A lot of weird abstract shapes going on here. Now, if you see it's extra light, then you could definitely, uh, you know, wait until you go with the lighter mixture. You don't have to be, be careful not to do stuff with the dark mixture that should be done with the light mixture and any other variation. Uh, yes, uh, Ray says, great brush control, definitely can tell the importance of dagger strokes. Yes, a great airbrush, uh, Ray. And yes, and I agree, Ray, dagger strokes are so important. And... Uh, I always, I always do my dagger strokes and, you know, always tell people how important they are, Ray, as you know, because it only, it just always pays dividends when you're, when you're live, when you're live painting, you know, painting your, your beautiful uh, finished pieces, that's where the dagger stroke, every dagger stroke you do practice is going to, is going to pay off. And it's going to show up in your finished work. I feel that way. And if we do that look one second, paint one second, we're going to find that life is going to get a lot easier and things that looked impossible to paint pretty much paint themselves, right? And I think that's that's another thing. When we do that one second rule, the painting will paint itself. That I promise. But it takes time to get that discipline. But as you can see here also, without the dark mixture, the indication of the hair would not be possible not in this uh, sort of very uh, very loose manner it wouldn't be possible to to do hair in a loose manner like this okay so we definitely can work on a hard edge right here let me get my free hand shield go nice beautiful hard edge And 
just remembering that one second rule. Because right now here is just these abstract shapes. So we just have to pay attention to those abstract shapes. Let's set up these lights here. <coughs> we'll go with this larger eraser. Try this wire again. And you can play with this wire, move it around, make things more even or irregular if you like. And what I'm going to do is just bend this. And then let's go ahead and give it a shot. Hey, Alan, good to see you. How's it going, my friend? There we go, we got some nice things happening there. Gonna dry off that ink so I don't reposition it on my artwork. There we go, I really feel that the trick is to stick with the Stick with the airbrush in that area for just a little while longer, but be very careful not to create spidering or soak the uh, board uh, or paper. So what I would do is recommend doing some tests with this and see how much, how much ink it could possibly take before weird stuff starts happening with the paper. we go I'm pretty happy with that and then we could go ahead and come back in with the fabric pencil here ah so so cool so Alan said he just got back from a bike ride and he says the piece is looking really nice I appreciate that my friend thank you we're getting to that point Alan you know parts four and five that's when the whole technique starts coming together, you know, the whole plan starts coming to fruition. And just very specularly, not trying to follow the hair perfectly. That would not be good, and it would not be what hair does. Almost always the hair doesn't receive the light all the way down. different parts of the hair, yes. Okay, so let's see where we can. Hey, Jersey Joe, how's it going? Good to see you, sir. Happy Wednesday. And I'm just going to keep moving around with this dark mixture. And let's see here, which I do see an area of interest here. I do see I might have been a little overzealous with this dark and the angle of her cheekbone here. Or her. That's not a cheekbone, this is a jaw. Let's go. And just pull this dark 
more on this angle. So you're always you're always assessing the drawing of the painting. And if you can change it, change it. If you can't, you have to live with it at this stage. But luckily here we can change it. Stand up a little bit. And you can see I'm working on the edges here, creating some nice uh, sort of aperture. Now, when you're in this, you're using this dark, be careful not to do any like real tight details too much that you can probably do better with a lighter mixture. So definitely suppress that feeling if you want to go ahead and just sort of, like if I wanted to attack the nose here, I definitely wouldn't do it with the dark mixture. If every mixture has its, uh, its use, its strength and its weakness. I always say avoid the weakness and exploit the, the strength. So how's life down in Tom's River there, uh, Joe? Joe's a fellow Jersey guy, of course his name, online name says so. Ah, oh, so Alan says, two weeks ago I left some nice comments on his Instagram. Uh, he really appreciated it. Oh, I appreciate your stuff on Instagram there. And I really appreciate that, you sharing that, Alan. That's for sure. And I appreciate you coming to my channel and, and hanging out with us. Definitely. So I can enrich this uh, breast area, which I'm going to start doing. Really have that breast start to turn. Uh, same thing here. We want to make sure that we feel that there are breasts here. Nice soft edge here on this cast shadow. But, but then it gets real dark here, so it's time to enrich that dark. And while we're here, we can go ahead and uh, pull up some of those really nice hard edges here. And trying whenever we can to go perpendicular to the freehand shield and not, you know. Uh, Alan says, I love how I do hair uh, with the wire. That's so brilliant. I wonder if I can copy that with digital. Oh, yeah, definitely, Alan. Something like that would be really cool. I just learned that today from, I mean, about a week ago from Dion, who's also part of our group. He's in... Uh, Alan, she is in, uh, I mean, Dion, he is in uh, the Netherlands, Holland. Gloria says, I'm lagging, but I'm here. Can't see you, but can hear you. Hey, Gloria, good to see you. How's it going? So glad you can make it, even though you can't see me. Yeah, I'm not sure where Wendy is. I did speak to her yesterday. She was doing okay. She was doing very well. She's making a, uh, which is really cool. She hasn't talked to you about it. She's making an exhaust system so the fumes from the airbrush get sucked out. Very ingenious, you know. I know, is it a stream without Wendy? I'm not sure, right? Unbelievable. Yeah, we need Wendy. Hopefully she can hear us and she'll she'll come.
And so I do like the fact that we are getting some. So I'm going to look at the reference and I see it's a little soft edge here. But you know what? I want to make it hard edge and I'll tell you why I'm going to create this a really sharp hard edge. Because I want her to come forward. And if I have that soft edge in the back, it's not going to be as effective for my purposes. So that's the only time you would really change edges if you really feel that it's going to create a stronger picture. Steve, how's it going? What about Mary? Yes, the, the Farrelly brothers. Those guys were great. Wendy's outside washing my car. <laughs> I think she would kick my butt before she would wash my car, Joe. That's funny. More like I'm going to be washing her car, right? And as you can see, you know, creating that hard edge really pulls her forward from the... <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, really pulls her forward from, from the background. And here's a good time as any to go ahead and uh, work on some of that background. And you see as we're going with the darker mixture, we're making sort of uh, more wide, uh, more general uh, decisions here. Uh, little detail, just a lot of larger shapes, such as a background, the hair. Now I'm a good distance away guys, and the distance away is really important so I can get smooth gradations. So the further you away, the better gradations you're going to have. I'm going to put my keyboard aside, I'm going to get some water because I'm dying of thirst. So what are some of the projects that you guys are working on right now? Anything anything different? Anything out of the ordinary? I can see the comments over there on the screen. Uh, you guys can hear me well? Uh, so I'm dying of thirst. I definitely need some water. So I also... Uh, I also want to talk about Florida and how much I loved it there and sort of feeling nostalgic this week. I don't know why. I know Ray hates Florida. <laughs> well, he doesn't hate Florida, but Ray is not a big fan of Florida. Uh, but, uh, you know, Ray likes, likes Arizona. He thinks Arizona is really great. Um, but I... I really, uh, so I can't see, even on my screen, I can't even see the comments. So I'm just going to talk to you for a few moments so I can get my wits about me, get hydrated. Um, so uh, we're going to start doing some new stuff on the channel. I'm not going to talk about it just yet, but some real exciting new aspects to the YouTube channel, which I'm very happy about. Just the, the variation of the programs, the live feed, the... Tim's Two Minute Tech Tuesday, and there's going to be something else coming up. I'm going to unveil pretty soon, but I think you guys are really going to love it. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay, so let's see if uh, anybody was talking. So I don't see any comments here. Let's see. Let's see if I lost you guys with comments. Uh-oh. So we're still live, right? Okay, great. So so Ray says, finish up the portrait of Gene Tierney, which is pretty cool. It's coming out really fantastic. So Steve says he'd like a set of the inks. Perfect. So, uh, Steve, what I can do is uh, send you a link real fast. So that's, that's going to be really cool. Let me do that for you. Uh, you can go on my website, paintedglyphs.com. But I'm going to go ahead. There's a link in the description field, uh, Steve, which is really cool. It's a good way to do it. But I'll get that link for you right now. Okay. 
Okay, let's see if this comes up. Because I know sometimes when you put in websites, it does not come up. Let's see. Oh, cool. Now Gloria can see, which is very good. Thank you, Gloria. Gloria says that she's gorgeous, and I appreciate that. So right there, you can see the, uh, the web page for, uh, takes you right to the link for the uh, link, the ink dilutions there, Steve. So definitely appreciate it. I'll make sure it arrives to you in one piece. And, uh, I definitely want to know what you think so I really appreciate that so let's go back to my live stream and I see everything's up let's see if I missed anyone talking uh, oh uh, Willie says Tim I really liked the video yesterday thank you so much I really appreciate that Willie I had fun doing it you know and I wanted to do something uh, you know just something quick like a quick video, but one that would go from start to end, just to give a really good idea of, uh, you know, what it would take from beginning to end. So, uh, thank you, Steve, and thank you so much. And uh, so, Gloria, I'm so glad that you're finally able to see me. And how much, how much energy you have on your phone right now? So we already shipped these to three different countries, which is really cool. So I'm pretty happy about that. It's getting worldwide as far as the people using them. Uh, and uh, so it's all very exciting stuff. Yeah, you guys got to see, uh, uh, you got to see what uh, Ray is doing. His Gene Tierney is really kicking butt. Oh my God, really fantastic. So what I'm going, 100% arise, now we're talking Gloria, that's good news. So I'm going to go ahead and reiterate this because I want her shoulder to come forward and I want this couch to go back. The only way I'm going to do that is making sure I have a really good, uh, really good hard, hard edge here. Remember edge work guys, not many people are going to talk about edges, but they are just as important as values. Look at your favorite paintings and see how the edges are, how the artist uses those edges and goes, uh, you know, you know, hard and soft a lot, you'll see. Now we can go ahead and uh, we could come back with our mono eraser and we could maybe shape this part of her lip there. There we go, she has such a pretty mouth. Jean Tierney, what a looker, huh? Wow, just so amazing. Thanks Steve, yes. Uh, and you know, as Steve knows, you know, edges are everything. Uh, probably, I would say maybe about 20% of a good painting has to do with edges. For the longest time when I was a student, uh, I would always wonder why do I, you know, what is it with the edges? Why do, you know, I would arbitrarily put some soft and some hard. But then, you know, you realize that when you start looking for it, uh, you know, you're going to find it. So I kept going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, look at the paintings, and I see the variation of the edges, but I wasn't too sure exactly what's happening. But I kept at it and looking at photographs and painting from life. And it wasn't until years later that I really understand it. But now you have guys like me who can go ahead 
and share that with you and give you the Reader's Digest version uh, is really fantastic. So you guys get to learn a lot faster than I did. I don't know what it would be like if I had the internet back then, you know, as far as how quick I would have learned. But then again, it was good studying with the teachers I did during that finite period of time because I was, uh, you know, forced to really be influenced by these great teachers and I wasn't all over the place. I think what could happen, especially today, with so many different teachers and so many different YouTube videos and online classes, if we're all over the place, then we sort of lack direction. Uh, Jersey says, Gene was actually discovered while on vacation with a family as a teenager. Wow, that's really cool information, Joe. Thanks. I'll tell you, she was just so gorgeous. Oh my God, right? I mean... Whoever discovered her, they did a good job, that's for sure. They definitely found a good one, thank God. Right here, I'm going to sort of uh, make sure I don't come in there with the... Uh, I definitely don't want to come in there with the dark mixture. That information is best with a lighter mixture. Probably the light mixture not the medium mixture. But we're going to stay with the dark mixture as long as we can to do things that need to be done with that dark mixture. I'm pumping that trigger back and forth and that helps me to get skin texture. Pumping that trigger back and forth, really paying attention to the variations of tone in the arm here. So important. Now there's some nice, you know, indentations here, shadow here. Make sure you do that with us with the light mixture. And Willie says, Tim, you ever think that you would be teaching people that are not in the same room as you? Not as a kid. When I was, when I started art school. It was like 1982, I was uh, 15 years old, and I was at the High School of Art and Design, and there was nothing remotely like this. And then after that, I went to college, and then the National Academy School of Fine Art. And like I always say in my videos, I took a bus across the Hudson River, two subways, and then walked four city blocks each way to go to art school. And to know today, I could just been hanging out in my bedroom, right? It's so unbelievable. It's, it's a give and take, right? Uh, I mean, it's a give and take. There's, yes, it's more convenient everything, but, uh, you know, I don't, I would never trade having that camaraderie uh, being within, uh, you know, in those uh, classrooms at the, at the National Academy School of Fine Arts, the Art Students League, and the High School of Art and Design. Steve says, an edge will direct a viewer's eye to where the artist wants it going to go as long, go along with other things like color, hue, and line. So perfect. And so, Alan was six in 1982. Yeah, I was wondering where you were in class, Alan. You know, I didn't see you, but, it had, but basically you were six years old. And that's why you weren't in class in our school. <laughs> You're a young guy, man. But no, I, I'm very happy that, honestly, today I'm very happy because it opens up our, our it opens up uh, educational opportunities to everyone, whether you live in uh, Montana or you are unable physically to get to a class so speaking of that this is what I'm planning on doing I'm having a I'm going to have which is pretty cool a physical workshop 
which I rescheduled. I was going to have it this month, but it's going to be in September. Details coming. And so that's going to be pretty cool. And there are advantages of doing it live. But I'm also going to be doing uh, classes uh, via Skype, which I already started doing uh, right now. And that's pretty cool. So you can actually do one-on-one -on -one classes with me via Skype. And uh, if you're interested, I want you to IM me or send me an email at paintedglyphs at gmail.com and we'll talk about it. And this is something that I have been doing, I have done before and I'm in the process of doing it now. And it's really a great experience for me because, uh, well, I'm teaching a really great person and a fantastic artist, but it's a very good experience because with the Skype program and using my my uh, program here, uh, it just really is fantastic. I can see what they're doing. They can see what I'm doing. We can talk at the same time. I could, you know, let them know where they need to make some adjustments, and I can hear their concerns, uh, what they're concerned, and they have questions about all real time. So really, it's very close to being face to face but that one-on-one -on -one is really great or even a three-on-one I can have up to 50 students at one time I wouldn't of course but I can have comfortably three to four students at a time one-on-one -on -one is great too so if you guys anyone's ever interested you guys let me know and since you guys are my live stream I'll definitely give you a price that is lower than it would be normally if somebody was a complete stranger. So, so Willie, it's 10.30, right? And we haven't had the uh, freezing up yet, have we? Let me go to my screen here. Okay, so, so far everything's looking really good. Uh, oh yeah, so <laughs> I can do see it froze up, so I do see some quick questions here. Willie says, it's a crazy in a way that I'm glad that you are here, Tim. Thank you, I'm glad you're here too, Willie. Uh, and Ray says, do I offer senior citizen discounts only if you have your AARP card, Ray? Very important. <laughs> And, you're, and, and if you have Citizen Cellular. <laughs> Very funny, uh, but yes. And actually, I do see that it has frozen up. So, actually, no, I can see it is. Uh, let me go back here. Okay, we just had a little, de little uh, delay here. Okay, so we haven't frozen up yet. That's good. So maybe, uh, maybe in the past it was a delay. We'll see. So, so far we're doing pretty well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, let's go ahead and uh, go back to our light mixture. So what we will do is I will just take my, what's in my airbrush here. If you have a lot, you can always take your eyedropper, go back in your airbrush and put it back. That would be no problem. But I used almost all of it. So I'll just dump out whatever was in there. Now, since I have a dark mixture in there, it's actually crucial that we clean out what's in there because the dark will definitely mix with the light. When I say clean out, just go ahead and just put a little bit of water in there just to flush out any of the dark mixture that would be in there. It's just a little bit of dark mixture can contaminate the light mixture. So I'm just spraying that out and now I'll put that water back in. Always make sure you have your artwork far away from the water and the ink, please that will definitely go a long way in saving your artwork. So I'm going to take the light mixture here. Right here. So 
So you see I have the light mixture. We don't have to put only a couple of drops. Put that right there. Okay. Take our artwork, move it aside. And let's make sure we have good flow. And we have the exact value we're looking for. Cover that up. Very little cleanup, guys, which is really good. Very little mess. All very good aspects to this. Okay, so here is something that uh, really interests me. Is that there's this little tiny contour line right here on her nose. I'm going to use my freehand shield. And I'm going to lightly, ever so lightly hit that. See that? Ever so lightly I'm going to hit that. There we go. So, you know, you see, if I was going to use that, guys, with the dark mixture, uh, it would have been a disaster times 10. Uh, so I definitely avoided that wisely because every, every one of the dilutions has its own job. And you want to be able to go, you know, pretty quickly from one to the other like we did now. We don't have to stop and mix them up. We already have them pre-mixed. So you see that, and so we got that really nice contour there. And we had some detail here before we were talking about. So let me go ahead and take this opportunity to go get some water and to go ahead and re-log in to the chat. Okay. So I'd, I'd love to hear what uh, projects you guys are working on and if so, uh, you know, what airbrush is your favorite airbrush right now and for what reason? I would love to hear that too. And don't forget to go ahead and hit that like button, guys, when you can. And this way it helps out the ag algorithm. So, you know, if you have time right now, I'm going to go ahead and reauthorize this chat. Okay, so painted clips. Email. Let's see. Okay, looks good. Bam, we should be back in business. Okay, I do see we're back in business, but I don't see anybody chatting. Let's see, are we still live? I never know. Nope, we're still live. Okay, for some, okay, I, uh, I do see, uh, Willie says, I was just going to say that, and, uh, and then Ray says, got it, and then, what, at what point does a painting become photorealistic, Ray says. That is, uh, interesting. I think the point that it becomes photorealistic is when it, it is being, uh, pretty much copy to the point of every little aspect of the photo without discretion or any kind of, uh, of uh, you know, artistic license. I think that's pretty much what would definitely cause that. So for some reason, I don't have the chat viewer. Let's see. That's interesting. Okay. So I'm just going to read the chat from over here. So that's what I'll do. I'll go over to here and I can see the chat. So that's good. 
So one of the things I want to do is get a second monitor so this way I don't have to depend on whether or not I see it on the screen. But do you guys like the fact that you see it big on the screen or are you guys okay with just seeing it on the Facebook page? Would love to hear your thoughts on that. So what do you guys think of photorealistic work as opposed to more artistic works? Oh, so you'd rather see, oh, okay, so Glory, you'd rather see the big on the screen. Uh, okay, that's cool. And, uh, okay, fantastic. Ray says Facebook page is great. I know you meant the Facebook page just having the, uh, the, uh, The chat on the screen is better than just having it, uh, let's say, in uh, in YouTube interface. What do you think, Ray? Okay, so one vote from uh, Gloria. They keep the chat big on the screen, so that's good. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, so basically, so Gloria says. Uh, now, would you rather see the artwork big on the screen and then omit? chat uh, how would you feel about that let's go ahead and check that out and what we could do is we can just test it right now so let's say I went ahead and just did this do you like this better let's say something like this where we can see the two much bigger on the screen. What do you think of that? You think that's better? Because I would love to hear your thoughts. Oh, that's right. Gloria says she's not an artist. Gloria's an artist in the kitchen. Uh, Willie says, I'm good. Just seeing it on YouTube. Cool. Uh, oh, okay. And so Ray says much better. So he likes it. So you guys like it when the artwork is bigger and we can omit maybe the chat in the screen does that sound like a good thing we can omit the chat in the screen and we can make the artwork bigger what do you guys think of that now this is what we can do might as well do it with you right so i can come here with the magic of xsplit go into my layout and i can move this this way that's too far and then I can actually take this and move this lower let's see Let me just move this over a little bit here. So what if I went here and then I can actually make this even bigger and put this over here and then I can come here Put that over there like so. Then I could even come over here, which is pretty cool. Now you guys got me. Now you guys got me all like uh, creative here, and I can come over here, add sauce to see if I can find a picture of this young lady here. I believe she was in documents. Yep, there she is. So what do you guys think of this layout here? Would you rather see something more like this? Is that more, more helpful in your opinion?
Okay, cool. Hey, Bradley, good to see you. Okay, so people, okay, so larger is better. So this is good, guys. You know, how am I going to know if I don't ask you guys, right? So it's very important. And if you have any other questions or concerns or anything, any suggestions that would make the live stream better, you guys are a big part of it, so it's really important that, uh, you know, so right here I can actually, there's a lot of tweaking I can do, guys. So on this side, just make it more streamlined, let's see. I can just uh, move her over there. Just do a lot of different things. So, okay, cool. So let's go back to our regularly scheduled program. So I'll be basically able to see, not so quickly will I be able to see your comments, but that's okay. If we have to sacrifice something for something else. Gloria needs wine, definitely. So we have to find some wine for Gloria. So anyone have a picture of some wine? <laughs> oh, Tone likes it. Ray likes it. Free beer. Free beer is fine. Domestic or imported? So I'm glad you guys like it. So, so you like what I've done with the place. <laughs> Gloria likes sangria. Right, Gloria? Yeah, I do like it. I think it uh, looks a little more pro. You know, the whole idea, you know, with the writing, you know, is pretty cool and interactive. I think this is a little bit better. I mean, I don't have this really huge live stream, so it's not like it's going up and down really, really fast. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so I think this is good. And, you know, as things grow, we'll will grow with the channel so that's really good so we have this light mixture going now and let's work on her eyes here let's see there we go so you can see I'm working on her eye there making sure it's the correct size and ellipse or, or perspective. Guys, I really love this, uh, this uh, Extreme Patriot Arrow. The amount of detail that you can get from this really doesn't have any rival but the Micron. Oh, copyright issues and how they work. Very interesting. I'm not too sure. I have to get in contact with my lawyer friends who always run from me when I have questions. <laughs> and uh, Alan says, uh, your imported beer might be my domestic beer. That's very funny. That's true. So Can Canadian Molson, right? I love Molson. That's such a great beer. How are, and... Uh, Alan says, yeah, it does copyright stuff work? Sometimes I paint something, but I'm not sure if I can post it on Instagram. Well, look at it this way. You know, it's a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork. You're not making prints to sell. So, you know, I don't really think it's a big problem. I don't think it's worth the copyright people coming after you for something like that. Uh, I think if you copied someone's painting, and you pawned it off on your own, yes. But doing a portrait of, uh, of a celebrity, put it this way, remember Airbrush Action Magazines and they had those, uh, those videos or even Coast Airbrush has videos done by Corey Sinclair or Javier Soto or Jonathan Pantaleone and they do paintings of celebrities. Those are, are, are being sold on the internet 
uh, all the time, those videos. And, you know, they're breaking copyright laws, sure, technically, but they're not going to go after them. Uh, not so. And also, there is something having to do with uh, if a celebrity is passed away, I believe there's a certain time period, uh, then it becomes uh, public domain, but I'm not too sure. Gloria says she loves her highlights. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, uh, I love doing this portrait. It's so fun. It's a lot of fun doing it. Uh, so we have a really, uh, really good stream going on right now. 15 people. I'm happy with 15 people. Maybe, maybe other artists would be like, oh, that's a bad week. But, you know, 15 good people. So that's why I'm happy. I got 15 cool people in this live stream. So that that definitely beats uh, 347 duds. That's for sure. So I worked on the eye a little bit there and let's see if we could smooth out this lip here yeah I do like the way things sort of look a little bit better now that it's blown up right and I could even darken it down uh, so I like it I do like the way it looks on the screen so yes it's uh, a little bit better you can see the reference now that's the reference on the internet. What I'm using is a lot lighter. I lightened it up, but that's basically showing you guys uh, basically what I'm working with. But the reference is darker than what I'm using. I always fix it in, in my photo manipulation software if I want to go higher key or low key, depending on the mood, you know, and what I want to express in the painting. So I always will change it a little bit. So let's go ahead and now I can't always see your comments so readily. Okay, so there we go. So I'm just working on some of the finer details here. And Ray says this is the fat path, right? That's correct. Ray knows a lot of anatomy here, so he's always a good person to talk to when it comes to anatomy. Bradley, good to see ya. So cool. And Gloria says she's stunning. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, so have a great night, Ray. Good to see ya. Take care of yourself. Sorry I didn't see that uh, comment until now. And Gloria, good night. Take care. Uh, and always great to have you here, Gloria. Thank you so much for coming by. Bradley says he finally tried the Liquitex ink and I bought on vacation and I was right. They don't erase very well. You know what it is, uh, Bradley? It's good that you tested it out because, you know, we always got to see for ourselves, you know, how we work, you know, whether or not it's true. But I think the problem is that it's an acrylic based ink and I think that's what is the thing that really causes the erasability. And this is exactly... Uh, this is a PH Martin, but uh, that's exactly the case, I feel, that it's acrylic base. PH Martin's India ink, so you have a better deal with that. It's much better, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, Speedball Super Black India ink is the best ink to work with. You know, and I do my dilutions with that. Uh, it's just really fantastic. Uh, the good thing is when they're diluted, like I do my mixtures, they really keep for a very long time. They don't, they don't clump up like, let's say, uh, another brand would do, like Higgins. Higgins is a great, great, great brand. I love them, but not as good as Higgins, not as good as Speedball in the long run. So we're still with that light mixture. So we're going to look for more subtle things we can do here. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, what time we got? 10.55, we're making good time here today. So let's lighten up this eye. What we're doing right now is setting up for the, for the white pastel. And you usually don't want to do any, any of this type detail till the end, you know, after you went in with your first wave of the dark mixture. Okay, so we're going to take our pastel pencil right here, and that is Pit Pastel by Faber Castell and it's a white pastel pencil and why I like it is because it it's soft but not too soft and hard but just right just like Goldilocks okay so let's go ahead we'll probably be better with the point here and we're going to do the specular highlight right there you're going to watch that eye just pop out guys now, can, be, can P.H. Martin be mixed to make new colors? Definitely. P.H. Martin and P.H. Martin works perfectly. Really fantastic. I really love the P.H. Martins. I think they work really well. Especially when I did some tests with color. You really like it. Um, let's go here and we're going to continue with some of these specular highlights here. Okay. Going to take our tortilla here. We're going to start working on the white of her eye. Watch how things start popping out, guys. You know, this is your first uh, full live stream with me. You can definitely, you'll definitely be surprised. If not, you've been with me a while, you know that this is when the magic happens. Usually in part four, uh, part four or part five. There we go. What we do on one side of the eye, we do on the other side. Definitely can start pulling up the lights here in the nose. It's, it's a light, but it's a soft light, meaning it's, you know, not very... This kind of a mushy light here. There we go. But these are the things that are going to really start bringing this together. See if I have a better stump here with a better point. Okay, this is good. Now, someone told me that if you take something like this and push it through, you can make a new point. Let's see if that works. I'm going to take a needle, an old needle, and we're going to push. Look at that, guys. It does make a new point. And maybe I can pull it up a little bit. Okay, that did work. See, I got a new point. And then I can come in with some tighter detail here. Let's come over here, see if there's any uh, questions here. Uh, my guest says, Tim, why, do you, uh, why don't you use a small brush to whiten the eyes and other areas? Because uh, the white paint would not work against where the ink was it's going to cause a shift and it's going to really look ugly believe me it gets a bluish tint to it and it just gets this weird opaqueness and it doesn't work so you want to avoid using white in the later stages at all costs because it's definitely not going to work uh, so yeah definitely don't want to do that Steve says, I also like them, Tim, and you could use P.H. Martin to mix with most acrylics. Wow, very cool. That's good to know. 
Bradley says, Tim, I don't know, you have a link to the PH Martin set and you told about before the number two set, I think it was. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, the shift thing is so, so important. And once you really experience the, uh, the grip of, the, of that horrible blue shift, you know, just really just, it's really rough, you know. It just ruins the work. And once the blue shift happens, it's a thousand headaches to try and fix it. It is fixable, but you're spending hours just trying to fix it. Not a good thing. Okay, now the set I recommend is... Set number two, that's definitely the set I recommend. Uh, so it does, it doesn't come with black or white. You're gonna have to purchase them separately. Uh, so, but I don't use black anymore, but you're gonna use white to mix with them. So you're gonna use, you're gonna need their white if you're gonna do color work with PH Martins. But as far as doing it with this technique, the white you definitely want to use is Drew Blair's 5050 Illustration White. Can't go wrong there. Uh, uh, I believe it is in the store, right, Bradley? Definitely. Uh, so the other set I don't have in the store. So right here we have this beautiful highlight here. Let's go ahead and put that in. Make sure those edges are soft, nice and soft edges around that highlight. Otherwise it'll look too, too outstanding. So I do like the way, you know, if we stick with the program with this, is that it does come together, and it comes together really nicely. So I'm gonna move around with this white, and the trick is not to go crazy with the white. Use the white sparingly, guys. If you use the white sparingly, everything you set up is really going to make this painting pop out. That's why, you know, we need a part four just to tie up all the loose ed edges here. Ah, oh, Steve, have a great night, man. Thanks always for coming by. Love your dog paintings. They're really fantastic. There's a nice uh, light here along the nose there. So as you can see, now we're coming in. So, so at this stage, you know, we went ahead. Oh, thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate that. Those highlights are a lot of fun to do. Always remember that one second rule, guys. It's going to really help you. So if you look for one second and paint for one second, you're going to be in good shape. Now here you can rub in some of the white pastel to really make that cheek come forward, guys.
Now I'm not using the white in the same way I did with the highlights. I'm just sort of blending that into the surface to create volume. And then I'll, I can just come over here and load this tortilla up a little bit further. I'm gonna really push that. We're gonna really push this shoulder so much further closer than the background. So, you know, if anyone's thinking that, you know, why am I using pastel, why, you know, does it detract from being an actual quote unquote uh, airbrush painting? But scratching and using razor blades are no different uh, than, than this. So we're using the white pastel because we're working on paper and we can, right? So we want to use every advantage at our disposal. So we're not working on metal. So the people on met who work on metal, they can't use pastel, it's out of the question. So that's why we're going to use that as our advantage. You know, I'm sure if they had the ability to make a better painting by doing that, they would. And so what I'm going to do is just create some luminosity here in the slip on the bottom. Definitely calm down some of these values here make our lip as elegant as it is. And then what I can do is take my new eraser And we can go maybe pull up some of the pastel. Maybe we got a little overzealous, but it's easily easily pulled up with the white pastel. I mean with the needed eraser. And you see we can get real subtle. And maybe we got a little overzealous on this corner of the lip here. So we can just tap that away. And if that doesn't work, we can just take our airbrush with the light mixture and we can dust that down. See that? So we just have so many weapons at our disposal. It's really great. We want to take advantage of each and every weapon. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our white And here we want to tap. We don't want to spread the pastel. We want to get real sharp highlights here. here reestablish the edge because the highlights don't go up to the edge of the lip a little bit further and then we can take our mono eraser and then we can create some negative space with those highlights here there we go so I'm really happy with, you know, the look that you get. Same thing over here. Maybe we can get a little more strong here. And let's not forget about what's happening here. So there's two ways. You can go ahead with the stump 
and you could very gradually put that in and that's a way. I'm just going to show you another way. So we can go directly onto the surface. Now you see how the eyebrow is going like this, almost like an upside down V. And there is a turn there. So we definitely want to express that turn. Oh, Willie says he has to go. Have a great night, Willie. Always great to see you. Thanks so much. Let me know how you like those uh, ink uh, dilutions. Let me let me know how you uh, how they are. You know how you like working with them. Okay, so you see, I'm just blending that in and really looking at the light. How the light is sort of bathing her you know how it's sort of falling upon her that's very important so we're looking not so much at values values we're looking at right the Xerox machine looks at values but what we're doing is we're really getting a sense of how the light is sort of going in waves across her that's so important to understand what the light is doing and and what's happening, you know, with her anatomy. And at this stage, you want to move around as much as possible. We're not done with the airbrush and the ink at all. We're just uh, in this stage where we can go ahead and start putting in some of those beautiful whites, you know. So that's important. So on average, how much do you guys who are out there, how often you guys airbrush? And when you do, how long are your, se your sessions? Now, for some reason, when you put the white pastel over the dark, you got to worry about a little bit of a blue shift, but you do have a lot more wiggle room than you do if you were working with uh, white. And that, this, this goes out to Mike's good question, you know. And uh, Bradley says, not nearly often enough to long once a week for three hours. That's great. If you do it every week, that adds up, uh, Bradley. That's not bad. And Alan says he tries to draw two or three times a week, usually two or more hours. That's great. Okay, that's fantastic. All you know, consistency is so important. Even if your time constraints uh, don't allow you to do many hours in a week. But if you can do that every week, I'm sure you guys really see a difference in your work. Uh, it's so important. Jersey Joe says, bringing his daughter to college. Wow, what? So congratulations, uh, Joe. Congratulations on your, your daughter going to college. Is she a freshman? Or is this just she's an upperclassman and she's just doing this, you know, this is not the first time. If it was the first time, I know it's a very interesting and very, uh, you know, stressful time so my guest says he haven't touched mine in a month or so basement still damp still oh I understand definitely do what you can when you can you know and uh, don't be too hard on yourselves you know and as long as you're thinking about it and studying it and then it's all good you know 
freshman, so she's just going there. Good luck. I know it's going to be rough. I remember when I first went away to college when I was a kid, my parents were very nervous. You know, it's still your baby. So congratulations on your, your little girl going away to college. I think that's great. Good job there, Joe. That's so much more important than a painting. Uh, oh, Jersey Joe says, Mike, to get a dehumidifier. Okay, that would definitely help, right? So we're doing really well. I think we're making some really good... Uh, Good strides here in this painting. Let's work on this edge here and also refine this shape. I think we can get a little cleaner here. And uh, so we're always refining the drawing, even in the later stages, Alan, right? So we're always trying to make it better. So that's really cool, Joe. So have a good time. And uh, she's going to be good, you know? I'm sure you, you raised her well. Stay. Tell her to stay away from the party people. That's my advice to anyone going to college. Because those party people, they're, they're definitely dangerous to be around. And dangerous for anyone's dreams, that's for sure. So you see I went ahead and smoothed out the uh, cheekbone there. So that's pretty cool. And okay, so we have a little bit of translucency in her eyes. Not so much this particular photo, but we do have a little. So maybe we'll even exaggerate a little bit, you know, to give a little bit of an effect. It's okay to exaggerate once in a while. See that? I just went ahead and exaggerated. Just give it give her eye a little bit of interest there, a little wow factor. Nothing wrong with that. We want our work to stand out from others, especially if we're putting our work in a group exhibition. And stuff like that are really good tips uh, to really help the work to pop, you know? Uh, yes, no parties, definitely. And Alan says, can you paint over pastel without issues? Sure, let me show you. So let's say we have white pastel over here. We can just go right over that, no problem. And then we can go with white pastel over that again. So this is such a great technique, you know. It really is, uh, it really does work. And just gives us a lot of wiggle room, which is fantastic. Especially in the later stages like this, Alan. So yeah, so I have the light mixture still in there. And now I'm coming in and uh, reiterating some details. And you see how that ear is really working with everything right now? Now that I lightened up everything, it really is coming into play nicely together. And the hair is working. Everything is, is really falling into place. Now part five basically is going to have a lot to do with the background, stuff like that. Uh, but now let's go ahead and work on some of the texture here in the background. Now what's really interesting is I'm really paying attention to edges. I'm, the, I'm very edgy when it comes to painting. It has nothing to do with coffee. <laughs> so uh, let me get an aggressive eraser. We'll get this uh, aggressive eraser. And what we're going to do is we're really going to fuzz up this background here, this edge here. We're going to really fuzz it up. Fuzz it up really, really fuzzy. We want that to go back because if it's going back, it's going to have no definition. So we we'll remove the definition here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our so with the light mixture, I say I'm about maybe four inches away from the subject because I want very smooth gradations. Now if I want it to be blotchy, I can just go ahead and pump that trigger and then, you know, vary the distances 
and that's a good way to uh, fix that. And Bradley says, Tim, if you don't mind me asking, what are the dilutions selling for? Oh, no, thank you, uh, Bradley. They're $16.95, uh, real inexpensive. You get four, you get, so now you get two of the light mixtures, you get a, a medium mixture and a dark mixture, $16.95, $5 first class, $7.95 to ship with a tracking number with priority. So I believe it's, a, you know, and I test every single bottle, making sure it's the exact value. And it's made with Speedball Super Black India ink. So the ink's going to do what you want, when you want. And what I can do, if you guys don't mind, I'll come here. And if you go on to my website right here, and you click on the dilution set, you'll see that you could go ahead and uh, just to go on to paintingcliffs.com and you'll see the dilution sets and it'll go right to a link and you can pay uh, via credit card or PayPal and I'll get it out to you within two business days so that would be pretty cool so let's go back to our painting and I'm really happy that people are taking to it uh, you know because it does save a lot of mess you know a lot of cleanup work especially you guys if you don't get to paint too often uh, this way you don't have to go ahead and remix the uh, remix the dilution because if you do it like in these cups here or something like that with dilution it's going to dry you have to do it anyway uh, but with you know when I do my dilutions uh, you know pre-mixed and in these really these really nice uh, amber glasses with a really good uh, eyedropper in there makes your life a lot easier and makes your painting go quicker because you're not spending time mixing and cleaning up after and so right here I can see I could probably come in here and clean this up here this edge right here so let's do that well that's what the end of part four and part five usually is on the live streams it's a lot of cleanup cleaning up meaning edges and stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and take my fabric pen where I I did see it okay here it is and let's go ahead and we're getting ready to finish up this live stream so glad you guys all came and supported the live stream I appreciate that so glad you made it you want to fade it up you don't want that to be a line so you want to make sure you fade that up you see that and same here and you got a nice sharp edge here on this side of the lip and then goes up to the cupid's bow right there like that, there we go I might soften that up by dusting it over with the uh, with the light mixture and the airbrush but you see I'm just manipulating edges right now and you can see I can even soften that up with the tortilla in here there we go and let's go ahead and soften that up just a little bit from a really good distance away, probably four inches away when I'm softening things. Also, look to see where you're putting edges and definition where there isn't. That whole look for a second, paint for a second, you know, in that ratio. So if you're looking for three seconds, you paint for three seconds, that sort of thing. A one-to-one -one ratio of when you look to when you paint. So you want to make sure that you're really paying attention. So when you put a line down, you've been looking at your reference less chance of you putting something that's not there so let's see okay and let's see we have some questions here oh here's Mike Mike says Tim are you going to darken the cheek and neck air more 
or are you one in that level already? Yes, see, the reference that you're seeing, Mike, is a dark picture, what I got. But I went ahead in Photoshop and I lightened everything because I didn't like how dark that was. So that's just a general reference. This is what I came up with. You see, this is a much lighter picture. Uh, let me just uh, lower the... So you can see what I'm working with as opposed to, uh, you know, what you guys are seeing in the reference. So I lightened it up significantly. So with looking at that, you can definitely see my mode of thinking and why I'm going at those values, you know? So I always recommend, you know, when you have a photo you want to do, or even, you know, photos that you have taken of the model, make sure you go ahead and manipulate the lights and darks, the contrast, the saturation, the best suit your vision. Uh, you don't want the photographer the one to be deciding that. So it's, we can do a lot of the artistic stuff during the uh, preparation of our reference. So we're looking at next week, and next week, God willing, we're going to go ahead and we're going to reiterate. Yes, exactly. That picture is so much darker. So that was a very good observation, Mike. Definitely, I appreciate that. Great question. Because a lot of people might have been thinking about that, but never really uh, said, you know. Might have been like, wow, Tim's making, because he realized everything's much lighter than the picture. So good question, Mike. Thanks. So you want to get this anatomy correct? The temporal lobe here. So I'll pull that out. So I'm going to be airbrushing to the wee hours of the night because I have a commission to work on. And so, you know, this is a good warm up to when I'm going to be doing the next piece. Okay, here's something I can work on in the last closing minutes of today's live stream. A lot of times where you have a dark, in this case her her blouse or maybe this is even the cast shadow I'm not sure next to a dark you're gonna have a corresponding bright white next to it so you see right here there's a nice white here and I just want to show you by putting that in it's really going to pop things out and her chest is gonna start looking like flesh you know Okay. So guys, I just want to say thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Uh, and, you know, if you guys get a chance, if you want to see this technique, uh, you definitely can go ahead and try the ink mixtures, you know. Uh, you know, my ink dilutions. So we'll go here and... So, you know, with the uh, dilutions, it really makes a really big difference. Your work goes much faster. Let me fix this camera here. Look at that state of the art. It looks like I'm in Orlando, guys. I'm really not in Orlando in my studio in Little Ferry, New Jersey. But it's pretty cool. I'm just getting a lot of tech stuff ready and doing that. So, so go on to paintedglyphs.com, uh, paintedglyphs.com, and there you will see the uh, link where you can go ahead and purchase those uh, ink dilutions that I pre-mixed and you can make this process go a lot faster really it's it's really really great and I, I hand mix them and I test every single bottle so you're going to get the right uh, value when you go ahead and follow along or even do the process on your own painting so it's $16.95 for four bottles, two light mixtures, a medium mixture, and a dark mixture. And if you're domestic, I can get it to you for $5 or $7.95, depending on whether or not you want it priority and quicker. International, there's also, if you're an international customer or, you know, one of my international followers, you can go ahead and click international shipping 
and you can definitely get it to you as well. So guys, I'm just going to go ahead and check and make sure. Uh, Raul, next week. Very cool. Good to see you. And I'm so glad you're here. Uh, and let's see. Camera adjustment for the stream could be lightning for us. Jeff, definitely very true. I'll do that next time, my friend. And so Bradley says, thanks for another great live stream. Thank you so much for coming, Bradley, Raul, Mike, and Alan. You guys are fantastic. I can't do this stuff without you. I really can't. Uh, you guys make me uh, want to do this. And this is not work for me. This is fun because I get to hang out with you guys, talk about art. And you guys inspire the heck out of me. You guys really do. And it's a labor of love. And, you know, so really thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope you guys have a great week. If you only get two hours a week to do airbrushing or drawing, just have the best time. That's what you can do. And hope you have a great, great week. Take care, guys.